Um, it's um, we're still working it out because there's so little anal. There's actually more analysis, as far as I know, on um, methane emissions from livestock than there is from soil. Um, addressing the issue of how much uh, or what practices increase soil carbon. Um, most of the studies that have, uh, or many of the studies that have been done on um, looking at how quickly carbon in soils can be built, are built on conventional systems where we're still using nitrogenous fertilisers and all of the rest of it, which um, in the conventional agronomic model are actually manipulate the amount of carbon in soils because uh, carbon to the in, in conventional agronomy um, robs the nitrogen soil that robs the uh, plant of nitrogen so um, so we know from quite a few studies that you know a cow in a system is going to in a year yield between 300 odd and 1500 kilograms of methane per year. Now you times that by about 20, which is the carbon dioxide equivalent equivalency of um, methane in its, in its effects as a greenhouse gas. So, you know, work out what, whatever that is. Now, I've done some basic figures on some of the, some of the numbers that are out there and um, I've got a little spreadsheet that I've generated where I look at all right. Well, this is the number of livestock that will have. These are the emissions that they might have. Right. The emissions are clearly linked to the type of feed that they're having. If they're eating a lot more, um, if the grasses that they're taking in are not artificially fertilised, if they're um, tall grazing where they're getting a lot more um, metabolised energy flow into the animal, if they're having, um, if their rumen is less overactive from eating indigestible fibre etc, well then that will all contribute to less belching, burping, farting, all the rest of it from, from livestock, ruminant livestock. So that, that's, that's one thing. If on the other hand we're following those practices then we're, we're, we're following practices which actively increase the exudate flow from so photosynthesis, um, glucose exudates off root systems. So that has a clear benefit in terms of building up the or transferring the amount of carbon dioxide in the air or atmosphere um, through root systems into the soil and the soil microlife and then ultimately into humates. So um, that table that I worked out I've got a range of options and it, it's, it, from what I can see, even at the worst case, um, we're still accruing levels of between um, 2 to, to 10 tonnes of carbon per hectare per year um, in those models. So that being the case, um, we're well ahead of the game as far as that's concerned. If you want to reduce, if you want to um, reduce um, the emissions of methane from livestock, well then they've got to be on pastures which are per, um, which are fertilised with uh, natural minerals and uh, through the soil food web. That's that's where they generate their fertility, and they. Theft and and preferably that they're using practices such as tall grazing where they're only eating the tops of the grasses and they're moving constantly so they're getting a lot more um, metabol metabolizable energy um, as opposed and, and the grass doesn't have to <coughs> go through a um, long recovery period is not in danger of being overgrazed and when we get overgrazing then the, the grass actually has to start consuming the carbon that it's accrued through through the photosynthetic processes so if we follow those sorts of practices then we start to really um, have a carbon positive situation where we're actually building carbon in the soils yeah of course there isn't there is a carbon cycle if we have livestock they will function to just as we do. I mean we emit methane too. I mean every organism does. Um, 
especially when you are finding it dif difficult with your digestion, that's when you emit the most. So if we eat healthily, same with livestock, well then they'll less, have less, less indigestion at both ends. So it's, a, it's part of the whole package, yeah. It's an interesting one, but it's not one that's often spoke about. Mm -hmm. People just talk about, all right, well, it's grass-fed. If it's grass-fed, it's all okay. Well, no, it's not. If it's grass-fed and um, you're still using nitrogenous fertilizers, artificial fertilizers, well then, you know, are you accounting in your carbon equation the energy that's being consumed to make those, make, package, distribute, spread those nitrogenous fertilizers and all of the other stuff that's put on? Probably not. Right. If you were, then that would be another that would be another big negative in the negative column. Um, secondly, the fodder that those that those livestock eat now is going to have a lot of, lot more protein than carbohydrates. So therefore, um, you know, they're going to be they're going to find themselves again having lots of um, well, starving of energy in the form of carbohydrate, which is again going to overactivate their rumen and cause them to have indigestion. So, so no, grass fed is not necessarily the way to go. It's better than having animals in sheds and doing feeding them corn on a plate by some strange distribution system. <laughs> um, but it's certainly not as good as having a. a more holistic management approach where you have livestock which are, go through a management intensive framework of um, movement around their property, around the property, um, that they're tall grazing so that they're allowing grasses to, um, to establish their full potential and do, do it in such a way that they build carbon at the same time. So that to me is a much better framework.